I've successfully priced three different apps and it's usually the easy part. But for my newest app, I'm gonna be honest here, I'm having a very hard time figuring out what the price should be. And the more I think about it, I genuinely think this is one of the hardest apps to price. And we'll get into why. Rather than doing a polished video where I come up with the pricing and I just explain how I got there, I thought it'd be more fun to be really transparent and show that I'm kind of struggling here. Talk you through the challenges, what my thought process is, but also turn it back to you guys in the comments section to get some feedback on what I should do. If you're new here, welcome to the video. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video, and today we're focusing on my newest app, Subscription Monster. I've been building apps for years, from Ellie to Luna to Mogul, and pricing them was always pretty straightforward. But my latest app, Subscription Monster, which is an app that helps businesses answer the question, what subscriptions are we paying for? It's breaking every pricing rule that I know. And I need to figure this out, or I'm not even exaggerating here, the app is not gonna make it to launch. Let me show you guys how simple pricing has been for my other apps. I usually look at two things. The first is, what are my underlying costs? And the second is, what are my competitors charging? And I try to find a price somewhere in the middle of that. Very dependent on how much value I think that the app is providing. Let's look at Ellie, my daily planning app. My underlying costs are around five to 30 cents per user per month. Competitors typically charge between 10 to $30 per month. My price point started somewhere in the middle at around $5 per month, and then slowly increased to $10 a month as I started adding more features. For Luna, my budgeting app, the costs are about one cent per user per month, and most competitors are charging between 15 to $30 a month. But the reason they have to do this is because most of them support bank syncing, which Luna does not, and that's just really Really expensive to provide. So the price point I landed on was $5 a month because Luna is way simpler than most of these apps and it doesn't have that expensive bank linking. I thought that $5 for the value it provides is very fair. And then if I add more features like the bank syncing, I'll increase it to get closer to what they're charging. The pricing is typically that straightforward. So what's making Subscription Monster way harder to price? There are a few major problems and they do get worse. Problem number one, which is concerning but not a total deal breaker, is the cost for running an app like Subscription Monster is extremely high. In my own usage of this app, my costs are about $13 per month, which is insanely high compared to the per user costs of Ellie and Luna, which are just a couple of cents per user per month. There are two major reasons that the costs are so high for Subscription Monster. First is I'm using a service called Plaid for the bank connection. So this is how a user can link their bank account and then it's going to import the transaction so that I can process it and find all the subscriptions. And Plaid is not cheap. I'm getting charged $1 per bank account linked and that's a one-time fee. And then 25 cents per month per bank account that I wanna access actively keep pulling transactions for. So if I have four accounts, three bank accounts and one credit card account, that's $4 just to link all of them, and then a dollar per month just to keep the connection alive and keep pulling transactions. That comes out to around $5 for the first month, and then $1 per month every other month after that. And that's only four accounts. A lot of businesses have way more than four accounts. The second cost is the AI cost. I'm using AI to analyze and find the subscriptions within a user's transactions. And this stuff is really expensive. I'm actually using a service called PostHog and the LLM analytics feature to track the cost. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But looking at my initial Initial usage, this is going to be very expensive. And I've tried really hard to get this cost down by iterating on this AI pipeline. I've tried different models. I've tried a bunch of different techniques. In my case, to scan about 4,000 transactions, that initial big scan cost about two to three dollars to run. And I'm using a very cheap model, which is Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite, which has really good pricing. And then to do subsequent scans, just to make sure everything is up to date, it's looking like it's gonna cost around five dollars for the rest of the month. So we're talking about seven to eight dollars in AI cost to scan 4,000 transactions. Transactions. When you add up the plaid cost and the AI cost, it's around $13 per month for my business, which has four accounts and around 4,000 transactions. So problem number one is my underlying costs are very high. Again, compared to something like Ellie and Luna, which is just a couple cents for the user, this is coming out to $13 just for my case. Okay, the costs are high, but that's not really a big deal breaker, right? I can charge $25 a month and then the app is profitable, right? Well, the second problem that I ran into is that these are variable costs. It's $13 a month for my business, but if a business has more bank accounts and more transactions, it's gonna cost even more to process. If they have 8,000 transactions and eight bank accounts, the costs end up actually doubling to $26. If they have 50,000 transactions, it could cost over $100 just to do that initial scan. So this gets more complex because I can't charge the flat rate pricing that I'm used to, like for Ellie, which costs $10 across the board for all of the users. I love the simplicity of that. But an app like this has to be some sort of usage-based pricing, which is a lot more complicated to model out and also a lot more complicated to 
convince users to pay. But it's still not a deal breaker, right? I can just tell people, if you pay $50 a month, you get 10,000 transactions. If you pay $100 a month, you get 20,000 transactions. Businesses do usage-based pricing all the time. If you look at a lot of AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic, they charge per the number of tokens that you use. Less predictable than flat rate, but still kind of predictable. Not a big deal, you can calculate it out. Now here's where it gets really bad in my case. I literally have no idea how many transactions a user is gonna have until they link their bank accounts first, which does cost me money. Before signing up for my app, users are gonna know how many bank accounts they wanna connect. So maybe they'll think, okay, I have eight bank accounts, so it's gonna cost me this much. This is the tier that I need, but they'll have no idea how many transactions they have in those accounts until after they're linked. And from my experience, that's a really hard thing to estimate. Personally, I was not aware we had 4,000 transactions in our bank account. I thought it was gonna be way more than that. And I can't go to a user and say, cool, you have this many bank accounts, let me charge you. Oh great, now you have this many transactions, let me go charge you again. For a product like this, it just doesn't make any sense. So this adds a level of complexity that I have not really seen in many other applications. I don't know any other app that has this problem, and if you do, please let me know in the comments so I can see how they dealt with it. But yeah, this is a really complex problem to solve. The next problem is I can usually look at competitors to figure out, okay, what are they charging? Maybe I can anchor it around there. Maybe they've done the math to figure out what the average cost is gonna be per user. For budgeting apps, for daily planning apps, there are a ton of competitors to take a look at. So figuring out the market price is pretty easy. But for Subscription Monster, there really is no competition. There is one app that exists, but it's purely manual, so there is no AI. I don't think they allow plaid linking, so I'm pretty sure their costs are probably like a few cents per month. So it's really hard to use them as a benchmark. Nobody is really doing it the way that I'm doing it with plaid and AI, probably for a good reason. And the companies that do offer this as a service, like QuickBooks and Mercury, it's usually a free add-on service that, to be honest, is usually not that accurate, and they're not using any sort of AI, so I think it costs them like nothing to run. So there's really no competitors for me to study. So I'm kind of on my own here. These are all the major problems, but before we get into it more, let's go back a little bit because a common question that I usually get is how am I tracking these AI costs? I mentioned I'm using a service called PostSog and a huge shout out to them for actually sponsoring this video. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been recommending them for years. I'd be recommending them even if they weren't sponsoring this video. I've been using their LLM analytics feature to track the AI costs for all of my products. And it has been so critical because AI features are very expensive. So you have to understand what the costs are gonna be before you release anything like this. They have a bunch of great SDKs. They actually can hook into the AI SDK, the OpenAI SDK. It plugs in great with Open Router, but super easy to set up. And then once you do, you can actually see a dashboard with all of your costs. And then you can even see the per user cost. So you can see which of the, your users is costing you the most. Then you can go and debug and figure out why is this happening? Are they just a power user or is there something wrong? I cannot imagine building an AI application without something like this to track costs. I'll leave a link in the description to check them out. But again, a huge thank you to them for sponsoring the video. Absolutely love Bosog. Let's recap the challenges and go over a few minor ones. First, the underlying costs are extremely high, which is really challenging because that means I don't have a lot of wiggle room to play with the pricing and I don't even know if people will pay for this. The second is the costs are extremely variable and I don't even know what they're gonna be until the user pays an initial cost up front. Another problem is the market expectation is a bit weird here. There are no competitors, so there's no one to benchmark against. And even worse, this is a feature that most products offer for free. So the market expectation is that they can get this for free somewhere else. Another problem I did not mention is because of the high cost, I really can't offer a free trial or a free tier, which really does suck because all of my products do have some form of this just so that the user can see if this is a product that they're willing to pay for. I really can't do this here just because of the cost. Not a great situation, and to be honest, I don't really have a concrete idea of what the pricing is gonna be, but I do have some potential solutions in mind. The first is just to get rid of Plaid completely and only support PDF and CSV importing. So someone can go to their bank, their credit card statements, download a CSV, download those transactions manually, and then add them to the product. There is a lot more friction with this, but then the pricing will get way more predictable this way. Although there's gonna be some underlying cost for me to scan these PDFs, but it'll be a lot more predictable on my end, because then maybe I can charge for the number of documents that are uploaded. Solution two is to create some sort of tier system and just really try to figure out what the average cost is gonna be for each of these tiers. I'd still use Plaid, but I would only charge based on the number of banks and accounts imported. I'm gonna have to make an educated guess on the number of transactions that are gonna come with that. And then just hope that everything averages out. This is actually how a lot of AI companies operate, especially some of these chat services. They usually have some sort of flat rate price where they offer unlimited messaging. They will lose money on the power users, but on the whole, it should average average out if they did everything correctly. I could lose a ton of money on these power users. I could add some soft limits behind the scenes and then just talk to them if they hit those limits or something. But yeah, that's option number two, actually kind of viable. I think that is probably what I will have to do if I wanna add the plaid importing, but 
We'll see. The thing I do have to figure out that I'm not too worried about is do I charge a one-time fee for this or do I charge a monthly fee? Because this is a product that a lot of businesses are not going to be using once a month. They're probably going to be using this thing maybe once a quarter or even once a year. Maybe I can charge like $50 for a one-time scan. And then for the same tier, I could charge like 30 bucks a month. I'm honestly leaning towards offering both options because there are businesses where it does make sense for them to track this stuff monthly, especially if they're a bigger company. For businesses with over 30 employees, it is very common to have over 100 subscriptions. It could be worth it for them to start tracking that on a monthly basis. But there's also businesses where they just want to do this once a year and they're willing to pay 50 bucks so they don't have to go through their bank statements manually. I'm honestly not worried about that too much. What I'm going to do is onboard the first couple of beta testers and then talk to them and figure out what pricing structure makes sense, how much would they pay to solve this problem, if anything. And then I'm going to pick a price and then just launch it to the public. I've always tried to share as much of the app building journey as I can, both the wins and the struggles and this is definitely a struggle right now. So I'm turning it back to you guys. What would you do in this situation? And if you run a business, is this something that you would use? How frequently would you use it? How much would you pay for something like this? Any thoughts would be helpful for me. I need as many data points as possible here. Here's what I do know though. Businesses waste thousands of dollars in unused subscriptions, including my own. Just using my own product, I've already canceled about $240 a month worth of subscriptions. This problem is real and very expensive and my solution does work. What I don't know though is if the economics of this are going to work. But it'll be fun to find out and we'll figure it out together. If you want to see how the story ends, hit subscribe to follow along. If you like this kind of content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to me rant and I'll see you guys in the next one.